Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today we've got eye candy, seismicity, space weather, and two bits of news in the disaster cycle. Everyone I know behind the scenes has kicked it into gear at another level so far in 2025. Let's start here with the last 24 hours on our star where things are calm for now, but we've got a growing list of items to monitor. Growing sunspots, large plasma filaments, and starting with those plasma ropes, the thin dark lines snaking around the sun here. One on the north, center, incoming on the south, and cresting the northeastern limb. That's a very big one. These are unlikely to all stay stable for days on end, and they're facing Earth the next several days. In addition to these large plasma filaments, we also have growing sunspots. The big one has crossed central heliographic longitudes and still refuses to flare, giving us the silent treatment. But behind it, you can see those other active regions are growing quickly. Eyes on those today, too. I'm watching all of it up there. So let's go next to seismicity, where the only note in the books is the big one in Iceland. These often precede volcanic upticks and were five weeks without any eruptive activity at all there. That could be about to change. Eye candy up next, we're at the air quality dashboard visualizations combining ozone detection, carbon monoxide, particulate matter pollution, and nitrous oxides. They now have keen eyes dialed in on key items in the dynamic chemical soup of the atmosphere. Link is below to get this visualization or a spherically wrapped one around the Earth. Now, on to our top two stories first. Craig Stone is really vaulting himself into a very short list of people who are right over the target on the disaster cycle. We have a rare polar motion and Earth tilt anomaly ongoing. Haven't seen one in the data like this since the early 2000s when the magnetic field had another major acceleration. Hopefully you all recall I've predicted that for 2025 to 2030, and I wouldn't be shocked if the blackouts we keep seeing and things like this are both trying to tell us something. And in that same vein, just days after Catherine Austin Fitz was on Tucker Carlson discussing the construction of secret bases and bunkers underground, it was admitted in full. Folks, I've been telling you the government is doing this. They have been for a while. So are the elites, and to a lesser extent, regular people like me who know what we know. I have spent hours over the last several days reworking a new way to forecast the magnetic pole shift, and while the red zone still doesn't hit until the 2040s, the chances of a 2030s event have doubled, and over the next five years, the chances of a major catastrophe kicking off the disaster cycle have gone from 5% to 25% seem to be rising by the week. Boy, we better finish up this documentary, shouldn't we? Shout out to Gold Co. and GoldObservers.com, our documentary sponsor. The first official trailer is coming out shortly, and like a rock that stands unmoving against the crashing waves, you need to do everything you can right now. That's food, water, seeds, clothes, plants, bullets, books, and ways to skirt the big traps that are on the road ahead. Gold and silver can do that now, in the descent, and in the aftermath. Gold is the easiest metal to mold, and silver becomes antimicrobial upon skin or blood contact, and infection is going to kill upwards of 20% of the planet over the next 25 years. Goldobservers.com. Time to catch up. Folks, you've got a lot going on at Observer Ranch the rest of the season. Definitely time to come out and catch your other family reunion. It was great seeing everyone these last two weekends. Let's keep that going. Find your time to come see us, and then lock it in. Observerranch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.